What is up everybody? It's Nick from Mining Office and today I'm going to revisit T-Rex Miner 24.2. Uh, we're going to look at dual mining, um, given the performance I had on the, my new 3060 card, I'll link to that video. The dual mining performance was really impressive on the new version. So while I do that, at the same time, I'm going to give you guys a quick tutorial on all the commands and features and uh, some tips in the T-Rex miner and more specifically the batch file. I know a few people have asked for that in my comments, so I thought I'd deliver on that. So without any further delays, let's hop over to my PC and I'll guide you guys through it. All right guys, so uh, just to start off, I have a new microphone. I think my voice will be clearer, but you might have more background noise. So just let me know how it is compared to how it was before uh, when I would film on my PC. Um, open the feedback, let me know which one is better. So onto the GitHub page, you can see this is the latest release. It's T-Rex 0.24.2. Um, I highly recommend getting this version and I'll tell you guys why. So they have added an LHR unlock auto-tune functionality, which I think is great. You can see here, it's enabled by default. You can see uh, LHR-autotune-mode in the readme. We'll get to the readme. Um, now the miner will try to increase the LHR tune if it's stable at the current value. So you'll find out what the maximum tune of your card is without wasting tons of time manually. So this is absolutely great. Think about the amount of time it saves each person times the amount of people who use T-Rex miner. I love this type of update, all right? Uh, of course, you can turn it off and a few other things here. So, um, also a bug fix for, for Raven, by the way, hash rate degradation on version 0 0.24.0. So maybe uh, my Raven coin cards, which I have also updated, will get slightly better performance. So uh, this guide is for Windows, obviously. You're gonna grab the win.zip here. If it's for any other Linux platform, HiveOS, whatever, you're gonna grab this one. Uh, I think through HiveOS, you can just automatically update the miner. But anyway, so grab this zip file. And once you have it downloaded, you'll find two files in there, lhr.md and readme.md. So open up both of those files. All the information you need will be in there. I'll go over it quickly before jumping into the bat file. While we're here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is right click on T-Rex Miner, go to Properties and Compatibility. You see I already have it checked, but you want to run this program as administrator. Always run your mining programs as administrator. Um, T-Rex will run, I believe, if you don't run this as administrator, but as soon as you put any commands for core clock or memory clock in the batch file, uh, it will no longer work. So you'll get an error and it'll say it needs admin privileges. So do that, set it as admin, and avoid yourself problems later. All right, so you see I've opened up uh, both of these files here, uh, the MD files, the readme, and the LHR. Um, I like to use Notepad++. It's a, a free utility that's so much better than just the basic Notepad, so I, I highly recommend it. Anything I'm gonna talk about will be in here. If you want any more precise information, it's all in here. So let's say we're gonna look for devices. Well, you can see the argument there, all right? If we look for, um, core clock, right? You'll find it there here, lock core clock. We'll find our, our thing for core clock, memory clock. So all the information, general information on any arguments in the bat file will be found in the readme.md. And in the lhr.md, it has the information for the dual mining, all right? And option two is standard LHR unlock. So I'm also doing that on one of my cards, the 3070. And you have the information for that in here. I won't go over that too much in detail now. I'll show you the results of what, what it gives afterwards. And we're gonna do an example batch file of the dual mining, which I think is the most complicated one all right so you'll have everything in there and from that everything will be more simple all right guys so here we go um i have a basic batch file here for ravencoin the, the first things i'll cover quickly uh there's a lot of resources for this elsewhere so i won't cover every little detail like i mentioned before so this is just the algorithm we're setting to kapow this is already in all of the presets that you get in the zip file you download for the miner so none of this normally you have to change um afterwards this you'll get from your pool that you're mining from so your pools website you'll find this information whatever server is closest to you and again uh, th the rest of this stuff will normally be, be filled out as well just make sure to change your address here to the ravencoin address if you're mining ravencoin the eth address make sure it's the correct address for the coin you're mining and then you can put your worker name afterwards uh, the password i just left as default and normally this will not be here, but this is the first thing we're gonna cover. Devices allows you to select and specify which GPU the arguments apply to. 
This is just the notation to say it ranges from zero, right? Zero being your first device to X, X being the, the max number of GPUs you have, right? So uh, let's say I have a 12 GPU rig, for example, it's gonna be zero to 11 because GPU number one is zero and GPU number 12 is gonna be 11. Before this version of T-Rex, it was pretty simple. They were basically ordered in terms of tier, meaning a 3090 would come first, a 3080 Ti next, a 3080 afterwards, and so on. But now with this latest version, they've changed it. I'm not quite sure how it's, it's, it's done, but anyway, it shows you all the IDs on the left. So what I recommend you do is you just start the miner once, just the default miner, just get it mining, see which cards it IDs as which device, take a screenshot with your phone or on your PC, and then just go that way. You know which cards are associated to what number, and you can tune them that way, all right? So uh, in this scenario, just the example, I'm gonna say I have three different GPUs, so we're gonna put devices zero, one, and two. You don't have to put them in that order, but obviously it's less confusing if you do. The next argument we're gonna move on to is fans. So for that, it's just dash dash fan. For this example, we're gonna say our device zero is 3060, our device one is a 3070, and our device two is a 3080. So for our first card, the 3060, um, we're just gonna set a certain percentage. So if we just put fan 75 for our first argument, that'll set the fan speed to our first GPU or a device zero, right, the 3060, to 75%. So that's settled for that, plain and simple. The second thing you can set is a target. So if you want the GPU to stay at a certain temperature, uh, say 60 degrees, well, you can put in uh, for, let's say our second card here, which is the 3070. For that, we're just gonna set T65 or whatever we said, 60, like that. That way the fans will you know, go to whatever RPM or percentage they need to control the core temperature. So this is gonna be the core temperature to whatever target you're setting. So you can set this to 60, to 55, uh, to whatever. And let's say for our 3080 card, we would want to do this, but with the memory, right? Um, it has the GDDR6 memory, or sorry, GDDR6X memory, which really that's what you wanna be paying attention to on 3070 Ti and above actually. So in this scenario, we'll do TM like that, and it's for the memory temperature, and we'll set that, let's say we want it to be controlled to 90, all right? So your fans will probably be hustling to keep it at 90, but that's just an example. Um, I wouldn't put the spaces, that's my bad. And uh, yeah, those are the three ways I use. The next argument we're gonna be looking at is gonna be the power limit. Again, it's just a percentage, so it's gonna be dash dash PL and whatever percentage you wanna set it at. So 60, 70, 80, whatever you want it. I don't think this requires too much explaining, guys. Next argument is pretty simple. It's gonna be setting the memory clock directly here. So for that, it's just dash dash M clock as such and you'll set that to directly the offset you want. In Afterburner, if you would put, let's say, a thousand memory, well, you could put a thousand, all right? Or let's say a thousand on the first, I want a thousand two hundred on the second, and then eight hundred of memory on the third. All right, so now it's time to get into the core clock. Um, there's two ways of doing this. So just the normal way, I would say, is by typing in dash dash C clock, and same way as for the memory clock, it's an offset like you would set an afterburner. So you can say the first card is 50, the second card is 150, and the third card we're gonna set to zero because for the third card, I wanna show you guys uh, another way of doing this, which is the locked core clock. So locked core clock, to my knowledge, is applicable mostly to the 16 series and the 30 series. Um, I use it mostly on my 1660 supers to cut the power down to like 70, 75 watts. Um, so it's, it's really good on certain cards, um, but I don't use it on everything. So I'll refer you guys to Seb's FinTech channel. He has a really cool and complete video on locked core clock, so I recommend you check it out. Um, if not, said it's like this, you'll type in lock-c clock. The first two cards, we put in core clock arguments. So we have to set these to zero. You can't set a clock and a locked core clock. But for our third card, we can now set a locked core clock. So again, I don't know exactly what values you would you should set for 3080, but just to change the example kind of on the fly, if it would be a 1660 Super, I would set this to about a thousand or a thousand fifty uh, to get the performance I want. So this might not be a good value for the 3080 we were using, we were using in the example, but 
anyways it's just to get my point across so yeah that's about it for the core clock the last point i want to cover is an argument that i used to use it, it can be useful i don't really use it anymore but if you want t-rex to auto update you can you can just type in dash dash auto update and basically with this argument when a new t-rex version comes out and gets pushed Miner will automatically download it and then update to that version. However, sometimes it doesn't work super well and it only half updates it and then it crashes your miner. So sometimes it's worked super well and other times it hasn't worked so well. So I just stopped using it. And for certain versions, it won't let you uh, update. So I know for, I think, 0.24.0, um, if you had a previous version to that and you had the auto update, it still wouldn't push you up to that new version because too many things had changed. That's about it, guys, for the basic arguments. Let's get into the fun stuff. Let's get into the LHR stuff. All right, so now we'll remove this. Um, let's pretend now that this batch file is for Ethereum, all right? And the card is LHR. So with this new version of T-Rex, all you have to do is just start the miner. It'll auto detect it's an LHR card and then it'll auto tune um, starting from a base level of 70% unlock. It'll tune up or down depending on the performance of your card. I'll show you guys that. I have my 3070 that's currently doing that. But first, let's say your your card finally stabilizes at LHR 30 or excuse me, LHR 73. And each time you rerun the miner or re, you know, rerun your batch file, you don't want to have it start at 70 and slowly build its way up to 73. You just want it to start at 73. In that case, once you've let T-Rex do the auto-tune, come back in your batch file and just put in dash dash LHR dash tune, and then you can auto set the value. So now I know my card is stable. Let's say I let it run all night at 73. That's where it stabilizes. And yeah, you'll just set that. And next time you open up the miner, it's gonna start right away at 73 and it'll tell you that target hash rate it's aiming for. This is the card I'm running on 70% unlock. By the way, nothing is stopping you from running combinations of things. So let's say uh, LHR cards and non-LHR cards, or let's say one card on a 70% unlock and the other one dual mining, you can, you can do that. I have two full hash rate 3070s going there, as you can see, and I also have the Asus LHR 3070. So you can see it's pulling around 44 mega hash. It's a little high now, 45, it's not usually that high. You can see it's at LHR 71. That's where the card stabilized. Um, and sometimes it might actually change. Like the first time I ran it, it stabilized at 72. Uh, this time it seems like it stabilized at 71. But at the end of the day, it gives the same hash rate. So that's what matters, guys, your hash rate. Look at that. I'm sure somebody's card at LHR 73 could give the same hash rate as somebody else's card at LHR 70. So yeah, look at your hash rate. Don't pay too much attention to that LHR value. And uh, also just notice the efficiency quickly between LHR cards and full hash rate cards. And now what you've all been waiting for, the dual mining. So uh, for this, obviously we're changing bat, bat files. Um, this is the one I use for my dual mining for both the EVGA and Zotac 3060s. Uh, so we'll go through it quickly. So you can see the main algorithm here we're setting is ETH hash, and then the LHR algorithm we're setting here is Kapow. Afterwards, oh, this is for the pool. So I put in my ethermine pool followed by the user and my Ethereum address. Afterwards, well, I just left a default password. I set my worker to 3060s. And then we get to our second URL here. It's gonna be your secondary pool, followed by user2, which is gonna be your second address, which is your Ravencoin address here. Again, followed by the worker. And then we have the basic arguments that we covered over before, right? And since they both stabilized at LHR tune 37, and for this, it's a it's a different scale of unlock. Instead of going from 70, 71, like it was for the 70% uh, unlock, for the dual mining, it's 30%. So getting above 30% is, is good. And this argument here, dash N, is just to change the reporting. So if you don't change this, you'll see your hash rate will fluctuate a lot. Whereas if you up this number, um, you'll see a more averaged out value. So it'll be more realistic because I think with the dual mining, your hash rates do vary a bit. Uh, yeah. The only other thing I want to cover with this, the only other thing I want to cover with this is kind of a, a flashback to my last video uh, on this subject, which didn't work very well. And the reason for that is that it is super, super sensitive to the power limit, guys. So when you try this version, make sure to try different versions of the power limit. 
Um, and I think they also improved that slightly with version 0.2 over the 24.0. I, I, I can't guarantee that, but that's the impression I get because it seems that even the unlocks are, are, are better, meaning I'm getting more mega hash than I did in the previous versions. So I'll show you guys on my PC what that looks like. Here we go. So I just have to explain one thing. I killed the miner and restarted it because I normally had the Zotac and the EVGA card running uh, in, in the same instance. However, since I'm recording, it was just like going absolutely haywire. So uh, it's only been running for four minutes, but trust me, it's been running for days. And this is really what it works out to basically. I end up getting between 13 and 14 mega hash on Ravencoin and then like 19 mega hash on Ethereum. So that's, that's really, really impressive. Um, I get, let's say, maybe a mega hash or half a mega hash less on my Zotac card on average. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys for real what this gave. And now let me just show you what it gives on my 3080 because I got that working too. And quickly, just for reference, this is the 3080 that I got dual mining properly. It gets LHR 38 and you can see the mega hash. It varies quite a bit. I get between 36 and 40 mega hash on ETH and then between 23 and 24 mega hash on Ravencoin. So that's really good. We'll plug it into what to mine and see what's most profitable. We're gonna start with the 3060. Uh, this is just the performance I get with 70% unlock on ETH, 35 mega hash at 110 watts. And on Kapow, just running it normally on Ravencoin, I get about 23 and a half mega hash at 135 watts. So having calculated that, uh, today's date is October 24th. Um, you can see that Ravencoin uh, and Ethereum are pretty much neck and neck. I use a $0.09 per uh, kilowatt hour. That's about what it comes out to in a worst case scenario where I live. Uh, so yeah, you can see we're under the $2.50 mark for both of these. And if I show you guys here um, the combination of ETH hash and Kapow for the dual mining, I split the power between both of them. I get about 19 mega hash on the EVGA card and here are 14 mega hash on Kapow let's say and after calculating that you can see that if we add these two numbers together 141 profit plus 127 we're over that 250 mark so right away dual mining right now is more profitable on this card if we do the same thing with the 3080 i didn't try it with a full unlock yet like 70 percent unlock maybe i should but on kapow it gives me about 47 and a half mega hash for 278 watts having calculated that you can see that it gives me a profit of four dollars 62 per day and again if we compare with the dual mining i split the water between both 36 and a half mega hash on eth 23 and a quarter on kapow this maybe is even undervaluated a bit a bit or underestimated and again, if we add both of these together, we're at 472. So 472 is bigger than 462. So yeah, to me, it's still more profitable to dual mine. And again, like I said, I think I underestimated these values on the card. So anyhow, really, really happy with the performance of T-Rex 0.24.2. Uh, I hope you guys try it out. Let me know what performance you're getting on the dual mining. Um, there's not much information out there on the 3080. Even if you look on the official T-Rex GitHub, they don't list any performance or recommended settings for the Raven and ETH uh, dual mining for the 3080. So especially if you have a 3080, let me know what your settings are. Let me know what your return is. And if not, see you guys next time, guys. Peace out.